title of my message is Then It Happened. And when God begins to move, let me tell you, it's not going to fit in the scope of your vision of a move of God. It's just not going to be there. Because what's going to happen is, is most people uh, define a move of God by, oh, we're having this uh, conference and we're doing this theme. This move of God is not going to be defined by a theme or by certain speakers or by certain uh, musicians that come. It's not going to look like what you think it's going to look like. Come on. It may look like a pandemic. A move of God may look like a, a, a country on fire in riots. See, y'all ain't hearing what I'm talking about. Let me tell you, a move of God was God stirred an enemy to come against his people and God burned his own house down, took all the utensils to Babylon. It's awful quiet in here, Paul. Amen, Brother Joe. Ephesians 5, 27. That Jesus might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy without blemish. Now, let me break this down. We're going to unpack this message today. And that word spot means disgrace. Let me tell you something. God began this move of God way back in the 60s when one woman stood up and took prayer out of school. That was disgraceful to the church. That exposed the church as weak. When we allowed our government to be taken over by unrighteous men and women who can't govern themselves, that's a disgrace to the church because we are built and founded on biblical principles. Come on. I've talked to literally hundreds of people all over the United States. And every one of them either grew up in church, had some to do with church, and they all left it because it was the same old thing that nothing ever happened. And most of them leave the church, go to a college, and get taught leftists, come on, Marxist theories, evolution. You can't, evolution does not work in a lab. Come on, we've allowed our schools to be teaching and uh, we've allowed, the church has allowed God to be just plumb taken right out. Church just sat back and let it happen. Let me tell you something. Ever since I've been pastoring this church for 16-something years, you know what I hear all the time? And you know why people leave this place? It's because, oh, you're just anti-church. No, I'm anti-weak. I'm anti, come on. Amen. I'm pro, put your dang boots on and let's get in the fight. That's what I'm in. Get your sword out. Get your sword out and start speaking the word of God and start putting the devil back in his place. It's time we stand up and do what we're called to do is to, is to occupy the, and fulfill the mandate that's on our life. We're not to be a bunch of weak need, shallow, hiding underneath a steeple. I'm a little stirred up. We're just getting started. That's spot. The word wrinkle means to change in procedure or method. It's irregularity. Come on, this shirt, if you just regularly washed it and just throw it. Listen, this shirt ain't made to be wrinkled. 
You ain't made to walk around just barely getting by. Just, oh man, I'm just barely making it, preacher. No. God, if he's if Jesus is going to present to himself a church without spot, without disgrace, without it being changed from what he... Come on, if you want to look and see what the church was supposed to be like, look in the book of Acts. When the shadow would cross people and they were healed, when Paul would pray over a prayer cloth and send it out in a move of God starting people healed... Come on. Blemish without fault or blame. Come on. In other words, a people doing what they're called to do. It ain't, it shouldn't be our fault that racism, come on, has been allowed to get this far. But it is. Because we let, we let the church become the most segregated place on Sunday mornings. Come on, man. Exactly, oh, us. We've allowed this crap to happen. <laughs> And it's time that we take back what the enemy's been trying to steal, kill, and destroy, and it's been the church. And you just happen to be the church, not a building. Come on. Oh, man, I got to keep preaching here. Remember, we've been talking about individuals that God's bringing order, God's bring, bringing a correction Come on. See, the correction and the order that he's bringing is he is correcting that we have been out of alignment, that we haven't been occupying, that we haven't been doing our job. That's what he's trying to correct. He's trying to correct us to where we put on the full armor of God, where, we, where we've where we got our helmet of salvation, our breastplate of righteousness. We've shot our feet with peace. We've put on the belt of truth, and we took our sword and our shield, and we're using it. Come on. Come on, he's correcting individuals. He's correcting the church. He's bringing a nation back into order and correction. Come on. Look in 1 Samuel 17. It's where we'll be taking our text this morning. <laughs> Listen, a move of God isn't going to be everybody to where they're all politically correct and everything. Come on. <laughs> everything planned out, all the right words spoken, all the right. Come on. It's all a move of God is not going to be everything that's on the program. <laughs> Oh, man. 1 Samuel 17. Look in verse 10. This is where David shows up and he kills Goliath. And you say, oh, man, this is, we've heard this story. Uh, no, you haven't. I'm telling you right now, you ain't never seen it like this. Because I've been studying. Pastor Troy told me years ago, study the life of David. And I've been doing that for 30 years now, over 30 years. And I'm telling you, I've never seen this. And it's amazing. Verse 10. Everybody knows the story. David was in the, his daddy told him to go take some pizza to his brothers. Verse 10. Again, the Philistines said, again, the Philistines said, he, he come down, everybody knows. Look what it, I tell you what, we're going to have to back up in verse 8. And he stood and he shouted to the ranks of Israel and said to them, why do you come out to draw up, look here, 
in battle array. Am I not the Philistine? And, and you servants of Saul, choose a man for yourselves and let him come down. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will become your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall become our servants and serve us. Again, the Philistine said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. In other words, they were discouraged and they were beat down. That's what that word means. But here's what the word defy means. Defy means exposed. Oh, come on, man. When one man walked down into that valley, he exposed the weakness. Come on. And what we're seeing right now is the church being exposed. And you know that word array? It means they were all showing up together. They, they were showing up. They had their armor. They had their swords. They had their shields. They were showing up. They were just scared to death to use it. Come on. How many times have we showed up and we didn't use the weapons of our warfare? We show up to church every Sunday morning. We don't clap. We show up every Sunday morning, we don't raise our hands. We show up and we don't use our voice to praise. Let me tell you something. Worship is your most valuable weapon that you have to make the devil run and flee. And yet we show up and we show up, we gather up and we just sit here. I don't know how else to do this. I don't know how else to tell you. A lot, a lot of folks are struggling with stuff, but yet we won't fight. We can't show up and do the most simplest thing. The greatest move of God right now going on in America and the most simplest thing that we can do is hit share and like on Facebook. Come on, spreading the gospel has never been easier. Fighting your battles against the enemy has never been easier because of what Christ did on the cross. And yet we show up and we let one person defy us and expose our weakness. Come on, man. Look in verse 21. Are y'all okay? Yes, sir. And Israel and, and the Philistines drew up in battle array, army against army. Come on. Then David left his bag, baggage in the care of the baggage keeper and ran to the battle line and entered in order to greet his brothers. As he was talking with them, behold, the champion, the Philistine from Gath named Goliath was coming up from the army of the Philistines and he spoke these same words and David heard them. When all the men of Israel saw the man, they fled from him and were greatly afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who is coming? Surely he is coming to defy Israel. Let me tell you something. Bad leadership has been happening so long in this army that they were like, Surely this man is defying. Surely this man is exposing that we've had a horrible king that, come on, See, now the people are starting to wake up to the fact. Amen. 
See, we're starting to wake up to the fact that the church in America has been broke. We've just been going through the motions. We've just been showing up. <laughs> it needs to happen. Look in verse 48. David goes down. He meets Goliath, slings his rock. Then it happened. When the Philistines rose and came and drew near to meet David, when the Philistine rose and came and drew near to meet David. Let me tell you something. It doesn't, it, it takes one person, one person, and what, what's, what the media and government is trying to do is make every one of us go run and hide. It just takes one person who is foolish enough to believe that nothing's impossible with God. Come on. Then it happened. What is it? It is a move of God through someone who believes that nothing's impossible. That's what it is. Just think if five people were like David. Just think if 10 people were like David. Just think if 20, 30, 40, 100 were like David. What would happen? I'm not talking about people who are perfect. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who are foolish enough to believe that God is big enough. Come on. Just to show up. Willing, willing to sling a sword. Willing to clap and run the enemy off. Willing to stand there vulnerable. Willing to praise his name. Let me tell you something. Every time the armies of Israel gathered and sent Judah, the, the tribe of Judah ahead to play the music, to praise, it confused the armies of the enemies and they began to destroy themselves. Oh, man. There's a hallelujah. Come on, 48, then it happened. When the Philistine rose and came and drew near to meet David, that David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand into his bag and took from it, took from it a stone and, a, and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. And the stone sank into his head so that he fell on his face to the ground. Thus David prevailed. Thus David conquered. Thus David withstood. Come on. Thus David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. And he struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in David's hand. Then David ran, stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of its sheath and killed him. I guess he killed him twice. David wasn't jacking around. And church folk, we'd just been jacking around. We'd just been kind of, you know, oh, I just kind of throw a rock at it and just kind of, Oh, yeah, we knocked it back. Ooh, hallelujah. Uh-uh, go on, cut his head off. Go on, kill it again. Hey, I killed you once, boy. Go on, kill him twice if you have to. Oh, man. David took his own sword. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw, let me tell you something, that's something about the church. The church has become so, uh, what are the word I'm looking for? So what? Soft, mm, yeah. Complacent, yes, they have definitely become that and soft, but it's uh, so uh, refined, so refined 
politically correct. See, come on, we're preaching now. David, oh God, he didn't have to do that. Oh, God, David, you're, so, you're just so brutal. You didn't have to say that. No, there's sometimes you got to say something to wake some folk up. Sometimes you got to cut that sucker's head off, make a mess, hold that ugly cross-eyed thing up there. What? Let me tell you something. David, David didn't just leave that head there. He carried it up out of that valley with him. Yeah. Oh, man. Can you imagine your old tongue hanging out? Pick up your lip and be somebody, you know. <laughs> oh, man. Look here. I, I, I want to make this as simple. See, we're, we're living in a day where all the intelligent, educated idiots are doing the speaking right now. It's a dumb, it, I'm telling you, I tried to watch the news and drink my coffee. And you can't. I mean, you, look, I love to watch hunting shows. And when hunting shows ain't on and it's fishing shows all the time, I don't mind watching a little bit of fishing, but I don't just sit there and watch it. I find myself liking watching fishing shows right now. I love to fish, but it's like, I like baseball, but like watching baseball, I mean, it's got to be exciting. There's got to be something going on. But I'm telling you, it's the educated idiots that are speaking now. And they're all materialistic, come on, worldly, twisted thinking, and they're trying to sell that to us as this is the new norm. Let me tell you something. That might be your new norm. That ain't my new norm. So, the world is looking for a voice of reason. And here's the deal. We're going to have to make it clear we're going to have to make it simple, and we're going to have to make it brief. And that's exactly what David did. Look in verse 26. Let me make this very simple, very clear, and brief. In verse 26, here's what David says. Then David spoke to the men who were standing by him, saying, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? David simply pointed out that I've got a covenant. He doesn't. Who does he think he is? Why is he exposing? Come on. That's simple enough right there. People. When we gather, this should be the most rowdiest. There's no way that a beer joint, a football stadium, baseball stadium, soccer stadium should ever be more rowdy than a people who have a covenant with Almighty God. Come on, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? There's no way. Yeah, the Holy Spirit's a gentleman. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> I watched an a elderly lady that the Holy Spirit, I'm talking nobody touched her, nobody, nothing. And it was back in the day when they wore them great big Tweety Bird glasses. 
And I'm talking the Holy Spirit hit this woman and boom. And her glasses, when she hit the ground, shot, I think you were there, Luke. I, and I'm telling you, she just like a tr oak tree, wham. And her glasses went, shoom. I thought there went that Holy Spirit's a gentleman thing. Because there ain't nobody touch this woman. And I mean, he just started going through the room and, oh man. There was people stacked, stacked. No catchers, no little blankets to cover, <laughs> stacked. And this woman's glasses somewhere. Come on, y'all. David pointed out, listen, he has a covenant. This guy does not. Here's another thing David did. Look in verse 34. Look what he says. He says, he's talking to Saul, but David said to Saul, your servant was tending his father's sheep when a lion and a bear came and took the lamb from the flock. Here's what David knew. Man, I'm just a servant of the Lord. Come on. We're just, a, we're just here as servants. You need to understand that. And I'm telling you, the, the biggest, craziest thing that I've ever seen in churches is when, some, when you give somebody a title. When you start giving somebody a title, it's hard to take it away from them. David said, I'm just your servant. Paul, through the whole New Testament, every time, Paul, your bond servant. Man, we're all just servants. We're just here to do the Lord's work. We're just here to be a light. We're just here to, come on. We're just servants. That's how simple it was to David. I've got a covenant, and I'm a servant of the Most High God. What you want me to do? Here's the other thing that David recognized. Verse 37. David said, the Lord who delivered me. <laughs> David understood he had a covenant. David understood he was a servant. And David understood where his strength come from. So it didn't matter if all he had was a rock and a slingshot. That was enough. Come on now. See, you don't have to spend four years in a seminary. You don't have to, to spend years of doing before God. Come on. You just have to put one foot in front of the other, and every time something comes your way, just trust God, praise God, speak to it. Come on. And just like David who killed the lion, who killed the bear, listen, David was a kid, and when the lion came, he seized it by its beard. Can you imagine a lion? You can hear a lion roar for five miles. Can you imagine getting close enough to grab him by his beard? <laughs> Not with a, but with a, <laughs> right? Right? So men, here's what I'm telling you. David was a bad dude. He wasn't the weak, need, hen-pecked man that most churches are full of. It's good. See, the world's trying to overcomplicate things. That's not what we're going to do here. We don't have to, listen, we don't have to sit here and overcomplicate it about why we think this is the end times. <laughs> listen, I don't care if we're in the end times or not. I don't care if it's time's up, this is it. 
Here's what we're going to do. We're going to occupy right here, right now, and we're not jacking around with worried about whether Jesus is coming back in tomorrow. I'm going to do just what we're doing until I die or whether it doesn't matter. If you're not ready now and living and occupying now, it don't matter if he comes back tonight or 10 years or 100 years or 1,000 years. Let's just do and occupy now. Come on. Yeah. Listen, people's had enough of old religious mindsets. 1 Corinthians 14, Paul addressed the very same thing. He said, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. However... However, in the church, I, des I desire to speak five words with my mind that I may instruct others also rather than 10,000 words in a tongue. Listen, Paul's saying, hey, we need instructions. And that's what we need right now. We need simple instructions. I'm not saying tongues is bad. I speak in tongues. I'm going to speak in tongues because I need to know what's going on. I'm going to get a clear picture of what's happening. Come on. And the devil doesn't know what's going on. It's like Morse code from your spirit to God's. It's clearing up. What you're, what's going on? I'm not against speaking in tongues. What I am against is running around the church speaking in tongues and everybody acting like crazy. <laughs> and that's all they want to do. And then all of a sudden the devil jumps out and goes, boo! And they all, ah! <laughs> Come on, y'all hear what I'm saying? See, us charismatics have been our own worst enemy. Until one kid showed up with a sort and stick and a slingshot. See, David, look, here's what I'm saying. Here's a whole army battle, drew up in battle array. And then here comes a kid who didn't look like them, didn't talk like them, didn't see the situation like them. Come on. He wasn't, he was, had no formal training. Greatest move. One kid with a slingshot and a stone, come on, woke an army a nation up. Look what it says. Look what it says in, uh, in, in, in verse 52. I'll tell you what, look at verse 50. Well, when he cut his head off, when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Look in verse 52. And the men of Israel and Judah arose, shouted, and pursued the Philistine as far as the valley and to the gates of Ekron. Now look, three things happen. Three things happening right now. The church is fixing to arise. There's fixing to be a shout. And they're fixing to start pursuing. It's not just going to be we're just going to assemble and gather and be a church on Sunday morning. No, when they arose, shouted, and pursued, it, you keep reading, there was dead Philistines lying in the road. And it says they chased them all the way to the uh, Ekron. And that word Ekron, what that means is it means to totally annihilate. It means to pluck out by the roots. There's some things you've been dealing with in your life you need to totally eradicate and destroy. Come on. There's things in your life you need to go on and settle it. You don't need to jack around with it anymore. You need to settle this thing. Come on, that word arose, here's what it means. <laughs> it means to rise up with intensity, 
focus and clarity. That's what it means. They arose. They finally were focused. They arose with intensity. Come on, the church has lacked so much intensity. Oh, passion and desire is a sin. No, 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 no. Passion and desire is an emotion, and from God, it will. Come on, was Jesus passionate when he went to the cross? So how is our passions and desires a sin? They're not. They got to get saved because you got some passions and desires that make you click on stuff you ain't supposed to be clicking it on. That's some stuff you need to eradicate. <laughs> oh, man, come on. But when your passions and desires are focused and they're clear and they're, come on, you focus that and clear it to all the principalities of the air where it's supposed to be. Come on. And then you're a light that shines in a dark world. Oh, man. See, we need to see Christians who are intense, clear, and focused. I'm not talking about idiots. I'm not talking about Christians who run around with fetuses in jars protesting. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about focusing and being intense on where the war should be. Come on. Jesus never protested. Hear me. The preachers in this town wanted to protest because of liquor stores. I had to ask them, have y'all ever seen Jesus protest? No. Okay, then all you're going to do is make a spectacle of yourself and then nobody's really going to listen to you anymore. Come on, y'all. We got to get, get all this stuff lined out here, straightened out. We don't have to protest. What do we do? We speak. We speak to, come on, the abuse that's going, taking place. Oh, man. Psalms 91, 7, a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. Let me tell you something. Once you figure out this word of God is a weapon and you figure out what you have, then you, just like David, one, it only takes one. It only takes one. Listen, this word is in here for a reason. Oh, man. See, we need, to, we need to understand and be confident that God is for us. God's not mad at us. Listen, it's been a satanic, dark, come on, spiritual attack on the church of preaching guilt and condemnation and that God's mad at you. Hell, fire, and brimstone. Repent, you sinner. <laughs> come on, y'all ain't never been nowhere, I guess. Y'all ain't seen them guys with them placard signs walking. I've been in big cities taking, when we go to Bull Run, there'd be people walking around with placards going, repent, the end is here. And everybody driving by going, that guy has lost it. And he's the only one that doesn't know he's lost it. The world knows that he's lost it. <laughs> oh, man. Come on, are y'all in here? Romans 8, 31, if God is for us, who's, who is against us? Come on. See, it only takes one to prevail. It only takes one to conquer, to withstand, be strong, behave oneself valiantly. That's what that means, prevail, to behave oneself valiantly. Come on, we need Christians to start being valiant. Have some valor, have some honor. Come on, man. See, then the shout came. That word shout, it's to sound the alarm. Shout for joy. Make a joyful noise. To mar, to destroy. That's what that means. 
Shout for joy. Shout for joy. See, Nehemiah 8, 10, it says, Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Come on. The joy of the Lord is your strength. There's nothing that confuses the enemy more is that when you shout right back at him and when you praise and worship, nothing confuses him more than that. Especially when he thought he done had you whooped down, beat down. Come on. See, it just lets the enemy know that your God is back in the camp. And that's what's fixing to happen. Because in 1 Samuel 4, you read where the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God, when it came into Israel's camp, when Saul first started, when Saul first tried to start getting everything together, it says, then it happened. As the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into camp, there came a shout out of the camp. It says that the earth resounded. The earth responded and it scared the Philistines. And now bad leadership, bad decisions, bad programs. Come on, it got them to the point where one Philistine now was exposing their weakness. Whereas before, when the presence of God was in their midst. Come on, y'all. See, it happened. See, then comes the pursuit. Joshua 23, 10 says, One of your men puts to flight a thousand. For the Lord your God is he who fights for you just as he has promised. When you understand that the Lord fights your battles for you, when you read about David's mighty men, if one guy could whip 800 in a bean field. And you know why? Because he, you know what he did? He got tired of running. He said, well, I tell you what, I ain't running, I ain't gonna die tired. I'm gonna die fighting. And the enemies had the church on the run since the 60s. It's time that we make our stand. It's time that we make our stand. Come on, man. Genesis 128, the mandate has never changed. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and rule over it. All that speaks of us occupying here on this earth. We don't rule over men. We occupy our ground. We occupy, we take care of it, we, we do what we do. Come on, y'all. Luke 10, y'all stand. Luke 10, verse 19. Behold, this is Jesus talking. It says, Behold, I have given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall injure you. Come on, do you believe that? Listen, here's what he said. I give you authority. That's the correction that's coming back is that there's some authority. We're, we're going to stand understanding that we have a covenant, that we're just servants, and we belong to the Most High God who has given us authority to tread upon serpents, scorpions. And then he says, and if y'all can't understand that, over all the powers of the enemy. And he tells us in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, you speak to it. You speak to it. We've got to understand that we can't just keep showing up and just standing there doing nothing and doing nothing 
well, that, I, I'm type A or type B personality. That's just not my per I don't care what your personality is. You know why I don't care what your personality is? It's because the devil doesn't care what your personality is. And if you keep using the excuse, well, I'm just not that outgoing and I'm kind of shy and I'm kind of, the devil's going to beat you up with that. I wasn't raised that way. <laughs> Guess what? You're being raised now. You're not being raised. You raise corn and taters. You're getting trained. You're getting trained. I'm not going to stand before God one day and God say, hey, you had all them people. And Consider yourself in boot camp. Jesus said, I have given you authority to tread upon snakes and scorpions. Come on, who's the biggest snake of all? The devil, right? See, the devil's been up in our face when he needs to be underneath our foot. on the bottom of my boot. Because <laughs> that's what the devil needs to know. Go to hell. <laughs> right? Matthew 16, 19. Come on, we've been over all this. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Why would he give us keys if he didn't expect us to use them? He said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So here's what we're going to start doing. Come on, everybody in here, slip up your hands. Lord, I bind racism. I speak to that spirit of racism. And I tell you to be quiet. And I tell you to loose yourself. And you go in Jesus' name. You spirit of hatred. I tell you to go in Jesus' name. I bind you here on earth, and I thank you, Lord. It is bound in heaven. Hey, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, what else you want to bind? What else you want to loose? Come on, it's up to you. This is your battle as much as it is, is anybody else. This is your battle. Lord, I bind greed in the name of Jesus. Greed, you will have no hold. Lord, we come against division in the name of Jesus. We bind the division. Come on, come on, come on, come on. If he lays something on your mind, speak it out. What? Deception? Sickness. Lord, we bind sickness in Jesus' name. poverty, stress. We bind you in the name of Jesus and we loose joy and love over our lives in Jesus' name. Come on. Fear. Lord, we bind fear right now. We loose faith in Jesus' name. Woo! Come on. We're, look, we're having church now. Fear has got to go. You know why? Because fear is a liar and it's totally opposite of faith. 
hate, hate. We bind you, we speak to you hate right now and we loose love on people right now in Jesus' name, on our brothers, on our sisters, Father God. Depression, we come against depression in the name of Jesus. Lord, we loose a settling. We lose peace and we lose joy for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Confusion. We come against confusion in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you that our mandate is simple, it's clear, and it's brief that we are to rule and reign through Jesus Christ. Judgment. Pride. We come against it in Jesus' name. Condemnation. Lord, we just come against that spirit of abortion, of taking lives. And Lord, we loose right now love and acceptance upon the ladies that have had abortions. Father God, we just, we just pray, Father God, that their hearts be turned and moved, Father God. We just come against that spirit that's trying to destroy the lives that are coming into this world to be prophets and apostles and pastors and teachers. Father, we thank you right now now spiritual warriors rise Lord I pray that our spiritual eyes be open to the battle that is before us Lord that we exceed the enemy for who he really is deception and ground clutter. Father God, I just begin to pray that the wind and fire of the Holy Ghost begin to blow and begin to refine and it begins to clear up, Father God, everything that the enemy has been trying to cause such confusion in the ground clutter, Father God. I pray that our prayers and our voice begin to rise above it all, that, Father God, what we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And, Father God, we thank you right now that we stand under an open window of heaven in Jesus' name. Hey, somebody shout in this place. Only God can. Father God, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you begin to work in the hearts of men and women all throughout this nation, Father God. Let them hear what's actually coming out of their mouths, Father God. Let them be so astounded at what's coming out of their mouth, Father God, that they know that it's not truth. And Father God, I pray that a spirit of truth and wisdom begin to move through this country. Father, we bind the enemy over the president and we bind the enemy over our government right now. And Lord, I speak, I speak confusion into the enemy's camp that has been influencing the governors of this great nation, Father God, founded upon your principles. Lord, we come against them and we just pray that, that your spirit begin to rise up in Congress and in the Senate, Father God. We just thank you right now, Father God. We just lose wisdom and understanding upon them men and women in Congress and in the Senate Father God yes Lord we thank you Father thank you Jesus Come on, somebody got a word in here. Come on, let the gift stir in you. Manipulation, jealousy, anxiety. <laughs> Whew. 
selfishness, anger, negativity, what? Bitterness, negative. God, we come against these spirits that have been plaguing, that have been plaguing the women, the men, the youth of this nation. We come against it in Jesus' name. living in a day like this is a this is the most exciting time the most exciting time in a Christian's life we just got to pursue it we just got to pursue it come on I want to be that one kid that shows up with a stone and a slingshot. Come on, who's with me? One kid, one kid, come on, who's with me? Who's with me? Who's with me? Who's with me? One kid, if he can do it, I can do it. Come on, one kid, one kid.